Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. Thank you for watching and clicking. So last time I spoke to you guys about what CML is, chronic myelogenous leukemia, and how I found my CML. So today I'm going to explain to you guys a little bit more about CML and the medications that we use to treat it. So before I get into that, I just want to remind you guys that CML is the result of a translocation of chromosomes 9 and 22 linking up and that's what creates what's called the Philadelphia chromosome. And this is a genetic mistake that causes the creation of immature white blood cells called blastocytes. And that, in essence, is the cancer. So in chronic phase, this is just detained in the bone marrow. And in later phases, like accelerated and blast phase or blast crisis, these blastocytes get pushed out into the bloodstream and can later travel down into other places of the body and cause more issues. So, like I just mentioned, there are three phases. Chronic, which is what I'm in right now, the easiest phase to treat. Accelerated, which is, you know, a little bit harder as those blast cells start getting into the bloodstream, where it can be about like 10 to 15% of them can be found in the bloodstream. And then blast phase or blast crisis, where about 20% or more can be found in the bloodstream. Now blast crisis is the hardest because it can mimic an acute leukemia and it can actually be di misdiagnosed as an acute leukemia. I actually knew somebody who was very young with CML, but was actually in blast crisis. And because she was so young and actually had CML and was in blast crisis, they misdiagnosed her as AML, acute myelogenous leukemia. Now, when she actually was treated with intravenous chemotherapy and then got it under control, because they didn't know she had CML, they never put her on the right medication and she eventually got worse. When they later found out that she had CML, they put her on the medication and she got better. However, eventually she did get worse and to make a very long story short, she did get a bone marrow transplant and she ended up getting cured. <laughs> but I'll get into that in a different video. But anyway, like I was talking to you guys about. <laughs> Most cancers have stages and you can't usually go in and out of the stages. For example, if you are diagnosed with breast cancer at a stage four, you can't usually revert back into like stage three or stage two. With CML, it's different. If you are diagnosed in blast crisis, you can actually get treated correctly, respond well, and go back into chronic phase. So that is one perk <laughs> of CML. So the medications I'm about to talk to you um, with or about treat chronic myelogenous leukemia. If or when you end up going into the later phases, there are different medications that treat those phases. So for chronic phase, there are three generations of medications. The first generation has a medication called Gleevec or Imatinib, and I might mispronounce some of them. The second generation has three medications, Spricel or Dasatinib, to Cigna or Nilotinib, and Bosilib or Bosutinib. The third generation has only one medication, and that's Iglucig <laughs> or Panatinib. Now there is a new medication out there, or not so new at this point, because I thought it was pretty new, but it actually turns out it's been out there for quite a few years, and it's called Semblix or Seminib. And now that sounds like a tongue twister. It took me quite a few weeks to get it right, a seminib. It sounds like synonym, 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 <laughs> a seminib. So these medications are what you call tyrosine kinase inhibitors. So tyrosine kinase, that's a protein, an enzyme. Inhibitor means stop. So basically what this means is it stops that translocation of chromosomes 9 and 22 from happening. So it's a fancy word or words of saying basically stop doing what you're doing, stop translocating, stop. And these medications are fall under the category of targeted oral chemotherapy drugs. So of course, this means that there is a lot of controversy of whether or not these medications truly are chemotherapy drugs. Um, but if you look under the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, it does clearly state that these are chemotherapy drugs. But let's be honest here. Whether you consider it chemo or not, these are toxic and horrible medications that unfortunately patients like me have to take every single day and sometimes for the rest of your life. Um, you know, I don't like to get into the huge argument about whether or not it's chemo. Personally, I consider it chemo. My big bag that it comes in says chemotherapy drug, proceed with caution, something like that. 
again, the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society considers it oral chemo. Um, so, I don't know. It's up to you. But personally, I still just consider it a toxic drug that comes with many, many toxic side effects, just like regular chemo does. A lot of people think just because we don't have the port in our chest or the IV and we're not in the hospital getting daily treatments doesn't mean we don't have chemo. Um, to me, that's not true. You know, we still have the awful side effects that a lot of other cancer patients get. Though, a lot of people ask me, why do, you know, why don't I lose my hair? So the difference between this medication and regular chemotherapy is what I just stated to you. This is a targeted chemotherapy drug. It specifically attacks that translocations between chromosomes 9 and 22, where regular chemotherapy wipes out every single cell in your body. Um, the regular chemotherapy literally wipes out every single cell. So that's why a lot of regular cancer, cancer patients <laughs> will be like um, immunocompromised. They'll basically have to have um, you know, infusions for platelets, or red blood cells. And that's not to say that a lot of CML patients don't have to do this, some do, um, but the vast majority usually do not. But it's again, that's not to say that it doesn't happen. But usually with these medications, the TKIs that we take, um, we don't lose our hair. However, some medications do cause hair thinning, which I was getting on the Sprysol. Um, but that is a question that I do get a lot. If I'm on chemo, why do I still have my hair? Well, because these medications don't wipe out every single cell in our body like regular chemotherapy does. This one specifically attacks that translocation of 9 and 22. So that hopefully answers that question. <laughs> um, but just because it's not regular chemo doesn't mean that it doesn't come with the same side effects, if not worse side effects. And the di biggest difference between this and regular chemo is that a lot of cancer patients usually will have their regimen and then at least they're done or at least have a break. We have to take our medications day in and day out, if not for the rest of our lives, for a very long period of time. Granted, I'm 25. The majority of people who have CML are over the age of at least 40 or 45. I was diagnosed at age 19. Yeah, so that's just a fact. Anyway, so I was talking about the different generations of medications, right? There are three generations and six drugs all together, including the new Semblex, the Seminib. I've been on three medications. So I started with Sprysol, like I talked to you guys in my first video, the big debate between Gleevec and Sprysol. We went with Sprysol and I had a very, very quick response. Um, I achieved MMR, major molecular remission, in my first year and a half, which is fantastic. However, I did have a lot of issues with Spreisel, um in the first two years. I had very, very bad joint pain, um, and I did go to see a rheumatologist, and my numbers were like way high for uh, inflammation. So because of that, we tried something called treatment-free remission, which I'll do in a totally separate video. But ultimately, I tried to come off the medication, of course, under my doctor's direction, and it only lasted three months. So. Based on that, <laughs> we had to go back on a medication, and because I had so much trouble with Spreisel, we tried Bocilif. Now, if you remember me mentioning, these are both second-generation medications. I know it's a little hard to keep up, but I'm trying to make it easy. These are both second-generation medications. Now, I'm going to explain something when I get to Semlix, because I'm on that one currently right now, but just keep in mind. So... I tried Bocilif and Bocilif was awful. I had so much swelling. I put on like 35 pounds. I had very minimal pericardial effusion, which was like fluid around the lining of my heart. The nausea was constant. Um, like it wasn't even me. Like my whole body changed like shape because of the weight gain. Um, and I was just short of breath. Like that drug just did not work for me. So I stayed on it for about six months and we went back to Spreisel, um, and my numbers did cooperate. I did get back to undetected, um, so I went back to Spreisel, and then I started having nosebleeds, which I thought was completely normal, um, and I was on a drug called Zoloft for anxiety, and we found out that I have a bleeding disorder, which again, I'll get to in another video at a later day. <laughs> 
I'm a whole box of fun, guys. Anyway. My medication stayed the same. I stayed on Spricel for another year and a half to where I am now. So my pain has gotten so much worse. I went to go see the rheumatologist again and both times I was checked for lupus. Um, lupus erythematosus or systemic lupus, the autoimmune disease because of my joint pain. And lupus is very hard to diagnose because there's several criteria a patient has to meet, 11 specifically. I met some, I didn't meet them all, but lupus is very hard to diagnose. Luckily, both times I didn't receive a lupus diagnosis, but we both thought that it was due to the chemo. So anyway, my hair is starting to thin out. So to those of you who ask, why do I still have my hair? Trust me, it's not all there anymore. Um, I was starting to have a lot of different stomach issues. I actually ended up having H. pylori during this whole bout of time. And I ended up switching from Spricel to Semblix. Now Semblix actually is the newest medication out there. At first, I didn't know if it was actually a TKI, but it's considered a TKI. However, it acts on a different part of the BCR ABL1 gene, the Philadelphia chromosome. They say it's a quieter TKI because it acts on like the outside part of the Philadelphia chromosome. And it's like a little bit quieter because it's like, it has a different approach on the gene. I forget what the technicality is called, but if you guys are really curious, I'll look it up and I'll leave it in the comments below. Um, my pain is still there. <laughs> um, I don't, I was gonna say I don't regret it, but I do a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. Um, because somebody like me who's young and I'm crossing off these medications, I do regret it a little bit. Um, the option was to drop the dose of the Spricel or switch to Semblix, and a little bit of part of me feels like I should have just dropped the dose of the Spricel, but anyway, we switched to Semblix, and it's been rough. I've been on Semblix for about a month and a week. And the pain has just been unbearable. Like, the swelling has been insane, the muscle pain. I can't, like, straighten my elbows. It's just been insane. Um, but that's the only issue. Like, I don't have any nausea, I don't have any vomiting, I don't have any diarrhea. It's just pain. And we don't want to switch medications again because at this point, I feel like I'm running out of options because... Like I said, there are the three generations, six medications in total. I've now used Spricel, Bosilof, Semblix. Now, remember how I said there are several generations and there are three in the second generation? So I didn't tolerate Bosilof very well. That was the one where I gained a lot of weight. Bosilof and, and I was about to say Seroquel. Seroquel is a psychotic medication, <laughs> silly me. So, Bosilif and Spricel apparently are like cousins, they're like brothers or cousins. So my doctor said I probably didn't tolerate Bosilif well because Spricel and Bosilif are like siblings. And I probably was not tolerating Spricel well because of that fact too. <sighs> However, Tisigna, I read, is not a good option for people who have bleeding issues or bleeding disorders. Hi, I have a bleeding disorder. So that probably is not a good option. And then panatinib, the third generation drug, is not good for me because of the side effect profile. And that's what my doctor said. So if you get rid of all that, you know, there goes to Cigna, there goes panatinib. I've used Spricel, I've used Bosilif. That's four drugs gone. And now I'm on some books. The only one that's left is Gleevec. And that's the first generation medication that's ever been created. So now I'm 25 with like an older person's disease and I only have one medication left and I'm only in chronic phase and my numbers are undetectable. Don't get me wrong, I'm extremely grateful that my numbers are undetectable. But I'm extremely nervous because did I make a mistake switching? Should I have stayed on Spricel? A lot of people are asking me, can you just change and go back to Spricel? I don't know. Truthfully, I was told that that's an option and I think it is still an option. But it's always up in the air because I don't know if my body will respond. And then you can ask the same question. If I go back to Spricel, does that mean I can't go back to Sumlix? Who knows? 
Would I even be able to go back to BOSU if I mean, ideally I don't want to, but if I ever needed to, would I be able to? It's just so many questions up in the air, you know? Um, I want a blood thinner because of my bleeding disorder. Does that mean to signals completely out of the question? You know, there are so many questions without like solid answers. And being 25 and not knowing is not ideal, but I thought I would teach you guys a little bit about the medications. Um, the There are tips and tricks that I use. There are some things you have to remember taking these medications. Number one, no Advil, no blood thinners. Um, these medications leave you prone to easy bleeding and bruising. Um, ice, heating pad, showers. Um, I could be a spokesperson now for this. Got icy hot. Ben Gay, I have so much of the stuff now laying around the house. What else do I have? Let's see. I have Biofreeze somewhere around here, but I literally been using all this stuff. I have like icy hot patches that have been helping me. Um, I've been taking a lot of Tylenol because like this pain is just so crazy. Um, avoid salt, avoid sugar, because that can like jack up inflammation. I've been doing this diet called Optavia. It's been wonderful. I've lost like 12 pounds, 13 pounds now. Um, and just number one, talk to your team. If you feel like something is wrong and they're not listening to you, just keep pressing the issue because eventually someone will listen to you because you're going to make them listen to you, whether they want to or not. Just keep knocking on the door, keep calling them, keep telling them, you know, something is not right. Because at the end of the day, you know your body the best and nobody's gonna fight you on that. They can't. So that's my advice to you. And I hope this helped. I uh, look forward to doing more videos with you guys. I have a lot of topics to cover. <laughs> and if anybody has any requests, please let me know. So thank you guys. Have a good night. Do what you think you can't do. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye.